was not long ago A million questions brought out the world With a million similes I'm alive, I'm alive and I don't know how it's always oh, way bigger than Out of everyone's head, who oh, no. knows? Hello, sir. I'm back from the Nishad Thalib, the Muntad al Rafidin, the Thakafa, and the Fanun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our program tonight, which is the third program for the Mesopotamian Forum for Art and Culture. آه كلامي راح يكون اكثر باللغه الانجليزيه والبرنامج راح يكون اغلبه باللغه الانجليزيه وساحاول ان اتكلم باللغه العربيه خلال المقاطع فاذا عندكم مشكله في فهم الجانب الانجليزي ارفعوا ايديكم حتى نوضح لكن ان شاء الله الكل راح يفهم الكلام آه all our most of our programs going to be in english and it's a first for us because all previous programs is done in the arabic language uh, part of the goal of the, the Mesopotamian Forum is to encourage young people, uh, young talents in our community, the Iraqi American community, and to exhibit their talents through evening like this. Hoping in the future they will become major stars, and some of them already are stars with what they are doing. Uh, the, the program is going to be, uh, um, we're going to go back and forth with, the, uh, with uh, who participate is uh, Anthony Casey, who's going to play on the keyboard uh, a piece of music. And later on, we're going to have Ahmed Barakat, and uh, we aim uh, uh, to uh, go back and forth. Each one will exhibit part of their work. Most of the evening is going to be really a presentation of their work, not a discussion with, with them. So my question is going to be very limited. I'm going to be a simple moderator and let us see their work because I believe their work will speak uh, on their behalf. We'll, uh, we'll start tonight with uh, Anthony, please, uh, with his uh, performance uh, of this, this piece.
know who is he. So who are you? <laughs> well, um, I'm a I'm a 17 year old boy that I live in Oak Park. Um, I'm doing really well in school. Uh, when I get older, I'm gonna want to be a doctor, probably internist. So internal medicine, I'll be working at a hospital. Um, I've been playing since I was nine. I started on the piano. Um, I can now. I just I was in my top group symphony class. Um, I also can play a little guitar and a little bit of the drums, so that's a little bit. Who, who is your teacher? My teacher? Um, well, I started out with my elementary school teacher, but that didn't work out so well, so we had to go into, you know, Europe. We had a Russian at first. She was the one that uh, taught me how to play classical, showed me all the, you know, technique and everything. And, but now uh, we moved on from that and we're starting to learn jazz a little bit, so. Good luck for you, I really appreciate it and I have to thank your mother for all the support. She is a wonderful singer and a musician, so you were raised in a family who also loved music. And we wish you the best of luck. Do you need to say anything else? Uh, no, I just want to say that if it wasn't for my parents, I probably wouldn't be here for right now, so thanks. One of the major questions comes up, who's in charge? This is an organization which is very unique in its structure for Iraqi uh, artistic or cultural organization. Uh, we work uh, what is called a flat structure. There is no president. I was asked to be a president, I refused, I declined. And there was other people uh, asked to lead and we decided we are not going to do it by one individual who is on the top. And instead, we, we believe the organization, it's an organization to encourage artists, uh, writers, and creative people in our community, in Michigan and outside Michigan, to come up with ideas for work, for events, and we'll try to help them in organizing and supporting these events. Like, this evening was really Ra'ad Barakat uh, child. He, he was behind it, he did a lot of the work, and I just stepped in a few, few days ago to, to help out in it, and there was other people who tried to help in their own way. So uh, I encourage any member who is in the audience who wanna join us, you're welcome to join us, we need more members. If you wanna bring your ideas to party, uh, to enrich this cultural uh, experience, uh, really we welcome it. I would like uh, to welcome next uh, Weam and uh, Naamu and uh, Ahmed Barakat to come over on the stage, please. We have two young talents. Uh, uh, as Ra'ad was saying early today, was. مواهب صاعدة. and Ahmed start laughing. published so far three novels. she write poetry and she's a filmmaker. she write articles. she give lectures on social and cultural issues. and she is really all over the map in so many many things. they try to communicate with the rest of the world. and we have Ahmed who is Barakat, who works right now in, uh, uh, in Washington. He is a broadcaster, but also he writes songs, he plays guitar, he sings, uh, plus he has a very wonderful uh, experiment in his paintings. And you see some of his works hang here, and we're gonna see more of them in the evening. And that's what we're gonna cover in the rest of the evening, each aspect of the talents they represent. But uh, the question I ask Anthony, I will repeat it to them. It's very simple. Please, who are you? We are? Um, well, I was, um, I was born in Baghdad, Iraq, and I came to the United States at age 10, about 30 years ago. Um, and I decided to be a writer at age 19. Um, my love originally started for um, just writing because it's just, it was something that was in me. 
um, over the years because I saw that there was um, a lot of Easterners. Um, so at, at that point, it was about um, age 26, about 15 years ago or so, I decided that I was going to mostly write true life stories about the Iraqi American experience. And that has really brought me a lot of joy. Um, and um, I started in that direction, and then I found myself telling stories through different forms, whether it's poetry, whether it's articles, books, or films. And that's how I got into the film industry. So what it took you to Prague? Your education is also very spread. Why, why you went to Prague to study? Oh, communications? communications. I actually, um, I originally wanted to be a lawyer. <coughs> And then I realized that I was going to be a, um, a very good student in law school, but not a very good lawyer <laughs> in real life, because I can only defend passionately things that I believe and love. And um, actually, that's how I ended up taking um, the project that I've been working on for the last couple of years. I feel like I'm somewhat of a lawyer in it, but the only reason I was able to take it on is because I just loved loved it so much and felt passionately and I felt there was an injustice and um, and I know in, in, when you work as a lawyer it's a little bit different. You are a storyteller but we'll discover that as we go in the evening. Ahmed, what about you? Who are you? We know your dad. Obviously, I, I'm half my dad, half my mother. My mother is um, is a, a lot of Ibrahim, Iraqi artist, uh, uh, director, theater director and wonderful actress and she uh, she passed away a few years ago, as many of you know. Um, that had a tremendous effect on my life. My father is the reason I, I do music now. He is the, the reason I, I began interested in it when I was young. He noticed that I had an ear for it when I was very young, and he kept with me and he tried. I was stubborn. I'm still stubborn. <laughs> he knows. But uh, I, I, I tried to uh, do it. Interestingly enough, guitar was not something I was interested in until I was uh, away from my father when I was in. Jordan, in Syria, like, I was. I found an old guitar that I started. I picked up and it had only three strings, and I, I just enjoyed playing it. And I tuned it my own way. I didn't know how to tune, and I was just enjoying it. I still am. I'm, I'm the opposite of wonderful Anthony. He's, he's a, he can read. I cannot read music. I can just, you know, feel it and, and, and maybe understand it, but not quite academically. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm a com And then the, the drawing, the art, didn't start until a few years ago. I really started taking it seriously because I had, um, I felt like I wanted to express something that is uh, lived lived through me since Iraq. And I was born. I should start probably. <laughs> I was born in Baghdad, Iraq, and I, I left Iraq when I was uh, about ten years old. And I traveled so many places, about seven eight countries, before I settled in the U.S. And uh, lived here in Michigan for quite a while, then moved to D.C. to work as a broadcaster. And throughout this time, I was little by little working on my art, developing, uh, scattered as I am, you know, uh, pieces here and there of, of art, whether it's a painting or a piece of music. Or, uh, you know, and it's just an expression. I feel like art is always has to be an expression. If you have something truly you want to say, and, and you do say it, I think people will, will understand, will feel it. I really believe that. And, I've been influenced by many artists, not least of which my father, he was my, my hero when I was young. He was my biggest influence. My mother was my son. She, her passing was the, the hardest uh, thing I had to go through in my life. And uh, the, uh, the, I think that explosion that happened later, all these things I wanted to do happened really after her passing because there was already so much that had to come up. So that's, that's why I'm here. Why, you know, this is something we just added uh, a couple hours ago to the program. Uh, a song he'd been working on, but he feel he finished it in his driving down. Should I? <laughs> Go ahead, let us, let us hear it. Um, this song is, is, is um, I've been working on it for the past few days. It's going to sound a little bit. Um, about all the wars that are happening, whether it's in Syria, whether it's in Iraq, whether it's in any part of the world, Arabic, non-Arabic. And it's also about equally, sorry, equally it's also about the, the observer, the person who has nothing to do about it. Um, not because they don't want to, but because they can't. 
And the way it was written, ran down for families, Elliot's and other stories, don't scholars through me. In me meaning there's not a damn thousand million words, and again and again and again, escape into the end. Lazy trees come planting in lands where I wanna be. Beating drunk with something in lands where I wanna be. The defeated mankind, carefully licking their shame, shivering all bits and pieces, be so always the same. Saving grace on the known, far from trouble in the known, firing rounds of paper, paralyzed integrity. Tried of showing inside, and that's where I want to be. Tired of showing inside, and that's where I want to be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, we'll move on to the. I would like really to talk more about. There's so many questions when you watch this piece, but uh, we have to move on. I'm sorry. Now, Ahmed, why are you flying to LA? You decided to write a song about this. Why? Yeah. Um, I don't know really. Uh, I was just. Uh, I was actually flying. Uh, uh, this is this was one of my uh, it was a, a very early flight, so the sun was barely coming out, and this particular scene, I was over the clouds, and you could see the clouds. They looked a lot like people, you know, some of them fading down, some of them, you know, rising up, and they were they were traveling like gypsies uh, with us as we fly, and so. Uh, I don't know, that inspired me to write, to write a song about the, the clouds.
find it comes uh, visually naturally the melody that goes with it and I build from that so the songs are kind of short they're kind of more like a poem form and offbeat I think. Uh, I think the images in front of us is a very good example about Ahmed how he feel about the violent and Look, he's, he's really very, he's tortured. Tell us more about it. Yeah, um, I was born before the first Iraq war. I, I, I had to experience it. The first Iraq war. What do you I, mean the first Iraq war? The first Iraq war, and I mean the first Gulf, uh, Gulf war. To us, for me, it's the first, uh, the first Gulf war, which happened in 90, 91, 90. Uh, it not only, in a way, sort of, not just our family, but a lot of families Would got you affected cut the by it. Oh. Uh, not just our families were affected by this. We, many Iraqi families were kind of scattered. And my father and mother were, took their separate uh, paths. And I was sort of stuck there. Uh, I, I, I stayed most of my life with my mother. My mother was really a very, very strong woman until the last day of her life. Um, without her, I, I'm nothing. And um, years passed by, and, and, and I, I had I lived in Yemen for a while. I lived in Jordan. I lived in, in Syria, and really everywhere I went. And as I was growing up, I was seeing the same face, especially in, in the Middle East, which is the, the this, um, unstable. And there's instability, and that instability sort of lived with me. I I, I, I carried some of it with me. Um, <clears throat> instability has to do with never being secured. Uh, never feeling safe and I feel there's a lot to say about that and uh, that's where the violence comes from this this particular exactly. thing also from a, a shot it doesn't look it but really it was very close to this there was a there was a, a, a killing in, in Iraq about um, six months or more ago and it was more than 50 bodies uh, just lying on top of each other and there was someone had a shot I can't I can't believe they put it on television actually it was very very gruesome um, this uh, and there was a man standing there was a figure standing over them sort of in the distance also uh, almost like the observer and it kind of echoes everything I've been saying up to now the theme which is there's always the observer uh, watching what's happening uh, watching all the, the the stillness that comes after that and so that you have uh, the uh, the bodies, as you can maybe see here, if you, if you can tell. Uh, and then uh, there, there's another side to this, also the painting. There's, there's a, body that, a body of people that's traveling upwards here. It's like a migration. But it doesn't, you have to, it doesn't come naturally. It, it looks like it's part of the pile, but really they're people moving. They're not dead. And those people are moving up to, towards some kind of exit up there. There's, there's hope, even if it's dark. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, 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 the hope is, is, uh, is, 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 is in, in this person, which is all of us. We have to do our part. Well, the mass killing in Iraq has been going on for the last 30 years. And the best uh, uh, witness of it, it is uh, the mass graves. Till now, nobody was executed or accused of the mass graves where half a million Iraqi is killed in over 500 mass grave so far discovered. And that's an issue very close to me and very moving. But the, when you have a culture accept these type of crimes, where a human being doesn't have any value, it's no wonder this crime keep going. Till somebody stand up and start to prosecute those criminals, that violence will never stop. And that's what all cultured advanced societies did and don't tolerate this type of crimes. Uh, we am is, uh, is your poetry ready? Yeah, this is actually the one that I can't find, but I'd like to read it. I can, um, if you can just, when I get to like uh, some of the word street, just go to the next page. Yeah. So I have all of it. Oh, do you ha can you put all of it up? Not one in one. one Not in one? Okay. I, 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 so people could read it. I put it on three slides. 
I didn't know you're gonna. Oh, on three lines. Three lines. I actually, I have it. I, I don't know what happened. I think you should. You can just. I can just. Yeah, I, I've read this um, many times. Um, this is. Tell us more. Why? What's going on here? Well. Why you are mute? Um, when I when I when I started writing, I began writing books right away. I never started anything short. I decided I'm gonna write books, and that's that was my first attempt. Um, thank God I eventually <laughs> read, um, studied poetry because when I ended up having kids, um, one of the things I did not have time is to sit and write a long book in the beginning. And now I am again, but. Um, so for a while, I wasn't able to express my storytelling through the same method. And poetry, I feel like, saved my um, life as a writer during that time because I was able to say what I wanted in the smaller pieces, um, and it like it helped. And uh, I felt like I was at least still writing. And this was, you know, after the 2003 war, for a while, um, it was too painful for me to address in any way. And because I wasn't writing books, it was kind of confusing because it's like, how do I express this? And I think this was one of the first poems I just said, you know what, okay, so let's just, let me, you know, I have um, half an hour, let me just write a poem about it. Um, and then I found once I wrote this, I just continued on and on with various poems, you know, uh, regarding war and other things. Um, this one is called, um, I am a mute Iraqi with a voice. I am an Iraqi, but was never asked personally. What was better, Saddam threatening to destroy me if I crossed him politically, or tons of deleted uranium, uranium Nepal, bullets, explosives, and other unfam unfamiliar concoctions besieging me at some hidden corner of my street? I am an Iraqi, but was never asked personally what I wanted, freedom to vote for men and women I know little about, who may or may not better my life, or to safe, safely be able to step out of my house. I am an Iraqi, but was never asked, do I want democracy or the tradition of my ancestry? I am an Iraqi, but was never asked personally by those who've come to rescue me, have we really benefited you, my dear, since the day we came near, or have we simply made a mess of your little hut? Actually, I don't know. Is there a time I, I have one more poem I'd like to read? Yeah, okay. And this poem was, um, actually this poem speaks for itself because I, I even explained why I wrote it in the poem. This is called the midwife of Fallujah. Everyone knew Amti Hasina, a Christian who lived alone in Fallujah after her husband went missing in some war and left her to raise a little boy. The midwife and nurse of the city of mosques and history, which was inhabited for many millennia, most recently those of Sunni ancestry, Amti Hasina was called upon by all. Repaid with money, live chickens, fresh eggs, dried dates and figs, she lived like a queen, although there she wasn't linked by lineage. I never met M. Hasina's patients in real life, nor in pictures, but last night I think I did, and they cut apart my heart. These images might be graphic or on the internet. Still, I clipped the mouse on each 72 of them. I couldn't eat my pita sandwich afterwards, but I had to view, or else it meant no recognition for the tormented. I thanked Allah Aunt Hasina wasn't around to see Fallujah an empty ground to weep over men and women she might have once treated or given birth to, lying in their beds, swimming in their blood, faces blown off, hair and skin scalded, bodies partially eaten by dogs, birds, and cats. Uh, as I said, Ahmed is, uh, is a songwriter. And uh, he tried to express different themes and let us listen to this song and tell us a little bit about it. Anyone? Anyone? Anyone. This, this is actually, it's almost exactly the same introduction I could give to this one as the one before. It's, it's a, you could say, part one or part two. Uh, it's also about the, uh, the, I mean, this is the subject that I'm, I'm really uh, focusing on lately, this violence. I work as a broadcaster, I should mention that. And every day I have to go in the morning and watch 
a certain amount of people dying, wounded. Uh, and this is very, it's becoming, it became such a routine that it became almost uh, numb on, on our part. I mean, it's, it's terrible to say, but it became a job. And it is a job. And, 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 but these lives are gone, these families. I think they're gone forever, and that's terrible. Um, and they, they didn't have a chance to, to, to defend themselves, just sitting in a bus one day and boom. And so this song is, is uh, also about the subject. Exiting souls said no goodbyes, banging their goes away, away, away. How many more must we allow? When will condemnation cease? and they're like, it's too difficult, I don't, I don't want to look at it. Which is, exa I mean, it's true, I, 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 it's difficult what I'm trying to say. It's, it's, it's not easy, it's, people want to look at a painting or, or go see art and enjoy it, you know. But uh, what I'm trying to say is not for joy, it's for awareness, it's for 
getting to people to people already realize they already know but even more so you know art to me is just not just a, a form of entertainment definitely not a form of entertainment as a priority it's 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 a form of bringing awareness it's a form of sharing with the world with the world what you have to say and uh, and and what, what what's going on truth if uh, if that comes through so that's what I try to do in the paintings um, the uh, I, I, I do drawings and, and, uh, and paintings back and forth. I use a lot of bright colors, sometimes really uh, kind of violent colors. Uh, some of the works, uh, we're gonna get into it later. Uh, but um, yeah, this, is, th this, this piece is, um, it's actually, it's, a, it's an image I had in my mind from one of the reports I saw on, on television. It's just these three girls. They were talking about fam families being lost and there were those three little girls, actually two girls and a boy. And uh, I tried, the image stuck in my head, I tried to reproduce it, and I, I do remember that the boy was very much at oblivion. You know, he did not know what happened, what's going on. Uh, the older girls, this is something, by the way, for those of you who are not Iraqi here, uh, all the Iraqis know this. Iraqi kids, and this is typical of any war, um, any, any place that's constantly in war, Kids grow up really quick. They grow up really fast. They, they're faced with things that they're not supposed to be faced with at their age. Uh, and so when they talk about uh, their loss, uh, it sounds like coming out of an adult. I mean, I heard it over and over again in reports. Um, and so I, I try as much as I can through, through color and line to bring that message across. But I guess uh, people already <laughs> know the, the about the violence, but uh, it's, it's very important to me that people begin to realize that this is a completely different life they're having over there. I was lucky, I was one of the lucky ones. We're all lucky here, we escaped all that. Um, but there, I mean, you could be sitting in a, anywhere, you don't know when it's gonna come or where it's gonna come from. And uh, violence is just, it's a state of the world in a lot of the world. It's not peaceful in a lot of the world. I know it sounds pessimistic and terrible, I, I don't want to be pessimistic, but the world needs a lot of help. And so uh, I, I try to say, I do my part, say, say what I can say. Thank you. Let's go back to where mm -hmm. Storyteller. And now she's using a different medium, different tool to tell us stories. Uh, before we go to uh, the sh showing the great family, uh, American family, uh, <coughs> T t t tell us a little bit about how you get to fil filmmaking and what stories you are interested in. And All the stories, like I said, I, I like them to be true life. Um, one thing I never really like to get involved in is politics. Um, if it comes into the story because of the trueness of, of something, that's fine, but I don't pursue it. Um, and. Um, I had been, I worked on a script called um, Green Card Wedding that I had worked on, it's a comedy, and even that, it's, it's a true story about um, a, a young handsome man who marries a woman just to come to the U.S., and she's very, she's a horrible person, um, and it, it happened quite often times, but this particular story, I knew about it, and in the midst of me trying to produce this film, um, this story came along, The Great American um, Family, um, and I, you know, this story pursued me, and my resistance to it was um, the p politics. It, there's so much politics involved in it that it just was, uh, you know, I, I, I resisted that for a while, but what ended up happening is, you know, with, when you're a storyteller, and I think this is what it seems like, um, Ahmed is kind of what's ha what happened with him and his paintings, you can't look away from reality. You know, you have some kind of responsibility, whatever job you have, you have a responsibility to do some kind of service to the world. And I, um, well, when I met this story, little by little, I understood this was what it was about. It was about, this is not, um, the story is about a woman who's in jail right now. She's Iraqi, she's actually, she's American, but her father is Iraqi born and her mother um, is completely American. Um, and 
she was put in jail for selling um, a piece of equipment, a phone equipment, to this guy that's in the UK. Um, after they put her in jail, the guy that she sold the equipment to came out and said, you know, this is not supposed to happen. I work with the CIA. The CIA promised nobody I work with is going to get in trouble. She didn't know I was with the CIA. So when he came out, it seems like um, they, the prosecutors were probably very stunned by that, the government, but nobody did anything to fix the problem. And this guy has been really trying to, to fight for, his sake, for her sake, to get her out. Um, and you know, when I looked at the story, it seemed like it was about Dawn, the girl that's in prison, and about the CIA operative and the injustice. But then, over time, as I read this, uh, the transcripts, I, thought, I felt like there was a bigger injustice that was taking place. Because this whole thing happened that she sold this piece of equipment during the sanctions. To me, I was in Iraq during the sanctions. And when I left, I felt like, you know what? No country should, have, should undergo that. Any country that puts another country in, under sanctions should be prosecuted. So the fact that um, Don is being prosecuted for something that, to me, the bigger thing was the illegal part, which was the sanctions, not her selling this equipment that didn't kill anybody, that didn't hurt anybody financially. She hurt no one, and yet they put her in prison, and plus it was a US operation to begin with. Um, and I think what ended up happening when I took it over is because I ended up really, I fell in love with the family. It's a great, great, great family that really stands up for what America is all about. Um, this is the reason what they, um, the image they portray, the things that they have done to get their daughter out, I, I understand that this is why everybody fights to come to this country, is because of what this family is about. Um, and so I, I fell in love with, with their principles and with who they are at heart and with their goodness. And I thought is the right thing to do is to take on the story because there's an injustice that's happening to Iraqi Americans here and there's an injustice that happened to Iraqis in Iraq because of all these misconceptions that go on. And I think it was a healing process for me because since the Gulf War until now, until I took on this project, um, there was so much I wanted to say about what I was seeing politically, but I avoided it because it hurt too much to express it. And I think now, I, through this story, through my love for this family and their love for me, I think I can do it without feeling like it's so, you know, negative and it's so, I can go deep without really like feeling um, like losing myself. And, and actually, I think that all around, it's a very positive story because this is a very patriotic family. And they stand up for things that, like I said, we came to this country for. Let's watch the trailer. <laughs> Donnie, are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, how you doing, hon? Okay. Yeah. Holiday day. Oh, I did too. We're a very close family. Um, you know, uh, always lived together, um, always did things together. We put them through school, colleges, and, and they graduated. Uh, I always raised all of them to never be afraid to try something because you would never know unless you tried it. Yeah, for the most part, growing up was, we got along. You never divorce your kids. Toby and I maintained a good relationship because we had three children together and, and you know, things, everybody's entitled to happiness in life, so, and you grow. Today's top story, a Rochester Hills woman convicted of breaching international law finds herself locked up today within a Kentucky prison. Her crime, providing communications to help get out of the street. We have to raise this question. We have to talk about it in terms of how a young woman, all-American girl from, uh, you know, from Rochester Hills can come out here and can be set up. And she just called me and told me that they came and took down in Darren. We'd like to think that the United States can fix this. 
you know, we're supposed to be the country that fixes things, the checks and balances so that bad things don't happen. And when they do, we fix them. You know, you're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. All right? Okay, I love you, babe. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye. so many questions when you watch this piece, but uh, we have to move on, I'm sorry. Now, Ahmed, while you're flying to LA, you decided to write a song about this. Why? Yeah, um, I don't know, really. Uh, I was just, uh, I was actually flying, uh, uh, this is, this was one of my uh, it was a very early flight, so the sun was barely coming out, and this particular scene, I was over the clouds, and you could see the clouds, they looked a lot like people, you know, some of them fading down, some of them, you know, rising up, and they were, they were traveling like gypsies uh, with us as we fly, and so, uh, I don't know, that inspired me to write, to write a song about the, the clouds. Carried by a bird I was Migrating eastward And his loud stomach Cold sitting still among many others Carried by a bird I was Chasing the sunset In his loud Iraq war. I, I, I had to experience it. the first Iraq war. What do you I, mean the first Iraq war? The first Iraq war and I mean the first Gulf, uh, Gulf war. To us, for me, it's the first, uh, the first Gulf war 
which happened in 90, 91, 90. Uh, it not only, in a way, sort of, not just our family, but a lot of families Did got you affected cut the by Oh. Uh, not just our families were affected by this. We, many Iraqi families were kind of scattered. And my father and mother were, took their separate uh, paths. And I was sort of stuck there. Uh, I, I, I stayed most of my life with my mother. My mother was really a very, very strong woman until the last day of her life. Um, without her, I, I'm nothing. So, and um, years passed by and, and, and I, I, had, I lived in Yemen for a while, I lived in Jordan, I lived in, in Syria, and really everywhere I went, and as I was growing up, I was seeing the same face, especially in, in the Middle East, which is the, the, this um, unstable, and there's instability, and that instability sort of lived with me. I, 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 I carried some of it with me. Um, <clears throat> instability has to do with never being secured, uh, never feeling safe. And I feel there's a lot to say about that. And uh, that's where the violence comes from. This, this particular thing, um, also from a, a shot, it doesn't look it, but really, it was very close to this. There was a, there was a, a, a killing in, in Iraq about um, six months or more ago, and it was more than 50 bodies. Uh, just lying on top of each other, and there was someone had a shot. I can't, I can't believe they put it on television. Actually, it was very, very gruesome. Um, this, uh, and there was a man standing. There was a figure standing over them, sort of in the distance, also, uh, almost like the observer. And it kind of echoes everything I've been saying up to now. The theme, which is there's always the observer uh, watching what's happening, uh, watching all the, the the stillness that comes after death. And so that you have uh, the uh, the bodies, as you can maybe see here, if you can tell. Uh, and then uh, there, there's another side to this, also the painting. There's, there's a, body that, a body of people that's traveling upwards here. It's like a migration, but it doesn't, you have to, it doesn't come naturally. It, it looks like it's part of the pile, but really they're people moving, they're not dead. And those people are moving up to, towards some kind of exit up there. There's, there's hope, even if it's dark. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the, the hope is, is, uh, is, is, is in, in this person, which is all of us. We have to do our part. Well, the mass killing in Iraq has been going on for the last 30 years. And the best uh, uh, witness of it, it is uh, the mass graves. Till now, nobody was executed or accused of the mass graves where half a million Iraqi is killed in over 500 mass grave so far discovered. And that's an issue very close to me and very moving. But the, when you have a culture accept these type of crimes, where a human being doesn't have any value, it's no wonder this crime keep going. Till somebody stand up and start to prosecute those criminals, that violence will never stop. And that's what all cultured advanced societies did and don't tolerate this type of crimes. Uh, we am is, uh, is your poetry ready? Yeah, this is actually the one that I can't find, but I'd like to read it. I can, um, if you can just, when I get to like uh, some of the word street, just go to the next page. Yeah. So I have all of it. Oh, do you ha can you put all of it up? Not one in one. one Not in one? Okay. I, 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 so you, so people could read it. I put it on three slides. I didn't know you were going to Oh, on three slides? Uh, three slides. I actually, I have it. I, I don't know what happened. I think you should, you can just. I can just, yeah, I, I've read this um, many times. Um, this is. Tell us more. Why, what's going on here? Well. Why you are mute? Um, when I when I when I started writing, I began writing books right away. I never started anything short. I decided I'm gonna write books, and that's that was my first attempt. Um, thank God I eventually <laughs> read, um, studied poetry because when I ended up having kids, um, one of the things I did not have time is to sit and write a long book in the beginning. And now I am again, but 
Um, so for a while, I wasn't able to express my storytelling through the same method. And poetry, I feel like, saved my um, life as a writer during that time because I was able to say what I wanted in the smaller pieces. Um, and it, like, it helped, and uh, I felt like I was at least still writing. And this was, you know, after the 2003 war for a while, um, it was too painful for me to address in any way. And because I wasn't writing books, it was kind of confusing because it's like, how do I express this? And I think this was one of the first poems I just said, you know what, okay, so let's just, let me, you know, I have um, half an hour, let me just write a poem about it. Um, and then I found once I wrote this, I just continued on and on with various poems, you know, uh, regarding war and other things. Um, this one is called, um, I am a mute Iraqi with a voice. I am an Iraqi, but was never asked personally. What was better, Saddam threatening to destroy me if I crossed him politically, or tons of deleted uranium, uranium Nepal bullets, explosives, and other unfam unfamiliar concoctions besieging me at some hidden corner of my street? I am an Iraqi, but was never asked personally what I wanted, freedom to vote for men and women I know little about, who may or may not better my life, or to safe, safely be able to step out of my house. I am an Iraqi, but was never asked, do I want democracy or the tradition of my ancestry? I am an Iraqi, but was never asked personally by those who've come to rescue me, have we really benefited you, my dear, since the day we came near, or have we simply made a mess of your little hut? Actually, I don't know. Is there a time I, I have one more poem I'd like to read? Yeah, okay. And this poem was, um, actually this poem speaks for itself because I, I even explained why I wrote it in the poem. This is called the midwife of Fallujah. Everyone knew Amti Hasina, a Christian who lived alone in Fallujah after her husband went missing in some war and left her to raise a little boy. The midwife and nurse of the city of mosques and history, which was inhabited for many millennia, most recently those of Sunni ancestry, Amti Hasina was called upon by all. Repaid with money, live chickens, fresh eggs, dried dates and figs, she lived like a queen, although there she wasn't linked by lineage. I never met M. Hasina's patients in real life, nor in pictures, but last night I think I did, and they cut apart my heart. These images might be graphic, or on the internet. Still, I clipped the mouse on each 72 of them. I couldn't eat my pita sandwich afterwards, but I had to view, or else it meant no recognition for the tormented. I thanked Allah Aunt Hasina wasn't around to see Fallujah an empty ground to weep over men and women she might have once treated or given birth to, lying in their beds, swimming in their blood, faces blown off, hair and skin scalded, bodies partially eaten by dogs, birds, and cats. Yeah, this, this song is um, another subject that interests me a lot, and I actually paint about it a lot as well. It's, it's evolution. Um, evolution is, is why we're here. I mean, we're basically very smart animals, is what we are. Um, too smart for our, for our own good sometimes. And uh, uh, evolution is really very fascinating to me. The idea, not just the evolution of the biological evolution of us, but also the cosmic evolution, how the whole thing began. I'm fascinated by the whole thing. I, I constantly try. I'm not a, nowhere near I'm as ambitious as wanting to be a scientist or anything like that, but I don't have the mind for that. But I, I, I'm fascinated. I, I, I read about it as much as I can. And, and really, the, 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 the way that so far science is telling us how the, the world began, it's very fascinating, the, the way it just kind of exploded. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of that is in us as humans. There's stardust in us, probably heard that. Uh, great scientists say that. And uh, we, ha we are capable of ex explosions uh, that are um, 
mental in, 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 many, in many ways. So this is, I mean, it will speak for itself in a way. I, I think. This one is, uh, it's, it's, it's about evolution, like I said, it begins, it begins there in that little corner, and then it, it unexpectedly blows up randomly, everything is random about this, there's no order, uh, the colors are everywhere, the, 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 the shapes, the, uh, there's, there's a cross line of people also here, uh, moving about. Um, there's actually a lot of detail which you cannot see here, the painting is, I think it's over there later if you'd like to look, get a better look at it. Um, uh, there's a lot of detail. It's, it's, it's basically what I said about evolution, the, 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 this wonderful explosion that unexpected randomness, randomness and, it, and wonderful things come out of it. Before we go to the next uh, section, we have to conclude uh, this by asking each one of you, what is your identity? Who are you again? We started with the question. I would like to uh, close this section with, what's your identity? Do you, have, uh, do you have a problem with your identity? Are you Iraqis? Are you Middle Easterns? Are you Americans? Are you just a human being who care about the humanity? Uh, can you answer this? When you asked the, um, 
now what ran into my head is um, yes, I'm a human being first. I'm a, I'm a woman, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, um, I'm a cousin. With regards to the regions, where we were born, where we came to live, um, I respect the dynamics of what I experienced in each land, uh, but I don't limit myself in them. I do, um, out of respect and out of the knowledge of my ancestry, um, I do acknowledge that I am Iraqi American. I do recognize uh, my ancestors' religion of Christianity and, and respect to having studied what it's about and things like that. But I don't really, and when I identify myself, it's not through those labels, it's of the what role am I playing as a woman. And um, like I said, most human, mother, because when I go throughout the day, I don't think am I Iraqi or am I American. I think like as a mother, what do I have to do today? As a wife, as a daughter, those are what matter, those are my identities. But I will never forget the fact that I was born in a certain land and I came at a certain land, there's a reason for that. And I can't separate myself from that, and I can't separate my work from that. Because obviously there's a reason why that happened. One of the things uh, I was interested in looking at your writings, uh, you are a big defender of uh, Muslim women. Why is that? Um, well, I, I tend to defend people that are attacked. <laughs> so I feel like they've been unjustly attacked. and. Um, it, as I said, when I went into, when I was at Heathrow Airport in that bookshop and what I saw, these are not the friends I grew up with. Um, I, I grew up amongst a, a Muslim community that was, you know, the mothers were like my mother. They, they looked out for me. Uh, my friends were wonderful to me. I didn't experience the discrimination, not that I wouldn't as I was, as I'm older, uh, but I've been very influenced by them and I believe that they've been influenced by me and they have a lot to teach if we allow ourselves to listen to them. Um, and we can't deny the fact that, um, yes, I'm a Christian of, of a religion that's thousands of years old, but I was born in a country that's Muslim. And I adopted that religion somehow or another. I adopted maybe not the name, but some of the customs associated with it. Um, I can't deny that. Just like my daughter, my children, my nieces and nephews being born in this country, they cannot deny their American um, side, the American culture. They will respect where we were from and know about it, but how am I gonna tell them not to do certain things that Americans does? And for us, I think as Christians, to pretend that we can live, we can be born and raised and live 10, 20, 30 years amongst Muslims, but not gain any of their, you know, um, their cultures and their feelings and things like that, I, I think that's just a lie and it's just a part of, um, this is what's creating the, problems anyways right now. So the, the problem of trying to identify those differences that are well, really not there when you live among the people. It's when we you come, you step away and you, then you start giving all these labels. But when we lived there, to me, it wasn't predominant like that. Um, I didn't know the difference between religions until I came to this country. I did not, I knew that I was Christian and that my friends were Muslim, but I, there wasn't so much of a stress as when it came here. Um, and so, and it's very sad to see that here in the United States, we are a very powerful community. We are a very wealthy community, but what's stopping us is that mentality of like, oh, this, this person is Muslim, this person is Christian. If we were just to temporarily put that aside and really work together and even appreciate, if we really appreciated our history, if we really, really understood the 7,000 years back what we were all about, we wouldn't you know, go through this process that's stopping us from moving forward. I would, I would build, I mean, that's, I would agree 100%. Obviously, I'm not a mother, but everything else I, 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 uh, I agree with. Uh, I think identities are really the issues of the world. That's one of the reasons I mentioned briefly earlier that I'm an atheist. Uh, I think I think that uh, it made sense for for it made sense for 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 a while that a few thousand years ago, and we were very small communities living in a big world, that we were separate. We we, we developed. We learned about each other, about the families separately. So it made sense that there would be different religions and different ideas and different thoughts. 
But the world changed a lot since then. We're, we're moving on. Uh, we're moving forward uh, in, in, in our discoveries of what the truth about the world is. It just, one question always comes to my mind. What if I was born in India, Iraqi? I wouldn't have all this pain. And without all this pain, I, would, I wouldn't give anything to the world. And so um, the, the, the fact that I had this identity crisis made me think about the world in a very different way. There is a lot of misunderstanding. A lot, most of that misunderstanding is from those. For all the races of, of this world, to build a better world, to live in peaceful, and uh, where our kids will uh, get raised without any violence, uh, inshallah. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Wiam. Uh, we have now a small part who's going to turn to Arabic uh, songs, and uh, um, I will, will ask Wiam to leave the stage, and Raadi stay, and Ra Raada, please come over. I mean, Ahmed stay. Thank you, Wiam. Give her a hand, please. Thank you guys for all your efforts. I saw you working hard, and you, I know your dad worked very hard on this. But I'm very happy. Um, this is the second event that I've come to in the past couple of months, I think. And I'm very, very, very happy about the outcome because um, years ago it wasn't like this. You would see a couple of people here and there. But, you know, as even though we seem like we're doing something that's kind of on the dark side, me and Ahmed sometimes. <laughs> هو منتدى مفتوح للجميع ومشاركتكم به جدا مهمة لإنعاش يعني بصراحة خلال فترة خمسة شهور أو أربع شهور هذا ثالث نشاط وكل نشاط نستغرب من عدد الحضور اللي ده يجي به هي دلالة أنه هو أن هنالك حاجة حقيقية لمثل هذا النشاط يا أخوان الثقافة هي التي توحدنا بين العراقيين ومع العالم كله ولهذا نلتقي جميعا في نقطة واحدة هي نقطة الثقافة ما يهم المذهب القومية الدين مو أقول أنه هذه ليست بمهمة لكن الثقافة هي نقطة جمع بين الناس وليس نقطة تفرقة البرنامج اللي نريد إحنا نوصل له هو برنامج يدعم الإنسان العراق اللي عايش هنا ونقدم أعمالنا إلى الجمهور الأمريكي حضوركم أي عمل فني بصراحة إذا كان رسم مسرح موسيقى شعر كل واحد يبعد بيته ويشتغل ويبدع ما يعني أي شيء أكو طرف آخر جدا مهم في الجانب هذا وهذا الطرف هو الجمهور وحضوركم اليوم هو في شيء جدا مفرح ومشجع أن بالاستمرار ودعمكم إن هذا نشكركم عليه ننتقل إلى أغنيتين خلي رعد يتكلم عنها وأحمد إن شاء الله تعجبكم. Can I say something بس راح أقول شيء بالعربي بس ما حولي. This is an honor for me. هذا يعني شرف كبير بالنسبة لي أكون with my dad on stage. This is the first time. سعيد جدا إن أكون معه. سلمت القلب بيدا طير وتاه عن وكرا سلمت القلب بيدا طير وتاه عن وكرا دعني من موعدا دعني من موعدا كل يوم كل يوم قلت بكرا قلت بكرا القلب بيدا طير وتاه عن وكرا سلمت Why did 
الحر يا صاحب دين لوح القلب والعين وعد الحر يا صاحب دين لوح القلب والعين جمعة وسبت والاثنين ما تخلص مواعيدة ما تخلص مواعيدة سلمت قلبي لك فيرتاح عن وكرة سلمت قلبي لك فيرتاح
حسن حامد صديق الله شكرا جزيلا
a million questions brought out the world with a million simile. I'm alive, I'm alive, and I don't know how it's always way bigger than me. Mind impediment spilling out of everyone's hand. Who oh, no. Once not long ago, a million questions rode out the world with a million simile. I'm alive.